Today I'm going to show you a little bit about the command line tools that we installed in the last episode. Uh, what I'm referencing here is uh, Robin Crom's cheat sheet. I've zoomed in a lot so it's easy to see, but there's, there's quite a lot of uh, things on the cheat sheet for covering demo. So if after watching this video you decide you want to explore it a little more, it's just a great reference to have. I mean, I use it pretty much all the time. Uh, so today I'm just going to show some of the basics of using the demo command line. It might differ slightly from the cheat sheet, but here we go. So first thing, this is my OBR project. It's a really simple little uh, toy project to kind of show how DAML works and how you can make agreements really easily with DAML. It's you know just a very short backend for this this case. But we're in our project, and they generally look like this. You'll have a DAML folder that's going to have all your source files in it. You'll have DAML.yaml, uh, which is basically your configuration file. And then you may or may not have other files depending on your project. But when it comes to a DAML project, those are the main two. So one of the first things we'd want to do with our project after we'd written the code uh, is run DAML builds. <clears throat> and that's going to build our DAR file for us. This is basically like a jar file in Java. I think it actually is even the same format, you know, essentially a bunch of things all zipped up together uh, to make execution deployment nice and easy since it's all in one nice little bundled file. Uh, next, we would want to start up our demo sandbox. This is basically our testing environment, and this is changing slightly over time now but this is what we would use when we're testing locally. So we'll start our DAML sandbox, which will give us a, local, a localized ledger. And now that that's spun up, we can go ahead and connect our JSON API to it. So much like we have DAML sandbox, we also have DAML JSON API. Uh, and we can run that from pretty much wherever. And that'll then connect to our ledger port. So our ledger is running locally on 6865. Uh, and this JSON API is basically, it's another process that's going to talk to the ledger on port 6865 and then give us a consumable JSON API on 7575 that we can then take and uh, consume that in our in our UI or wherever our application happens to live. In this case, it's a small little UI written in view. So I'll start up the JSON API. And now that it's up and we're bound to our local port, I can go ahead and I can start my UI. And that's going to be the entire way we uh, spin up a DAML app in most cases. And interestingly here, you know, over here we did DAML sandbox. Uh, and we're talking to the just the sandbox itself that's built into DAML, but if it was another type of ledger, we would be able to just run our run DAML deploy instead of DAML sandbox against that ledger, and then go ahead and hook up our JSON API to that instead. Uh, we would get basically the same exact thing where the ledger itself wouldn't matter to us. Uh, we would just be consuming the JSON API. So the API that my application is using right now against the demo sandbox would be the same exact API that I would use against the Fabric or Sawtooth or other types of ledgers. Um, so now my UI should be spun up. So I'm just going to connect it to localhost. And we can see here we have my little application. And I can log in. And then I can go ahead and do something. Let's see, I could give Francesco, who's one of my coworkers, offer him a beer, and that's going to be recorded. So now what just happened here is that the JSON API went and commute, we went and communicated to our JSON API that was running over here. It received some requests, and then it went and submitted the request to the ledger. Uh, and yeah, that's basically it. Actually, that's not the correct output. I should have made the output more verbose so we could see it, but uh, you can just trust me with that, that we went through very simply and our API request went and sent it to the ledger. I can actually show the API request too because it is rather, rather small and also will demonstrate how um, 
we can also start our demo studio. Demo studio is essentially a visual studio with some nice plugins that make writing demo very easy um, that we're still you know building out a little bit. And let's see here, where would a, my API queries be? They'd be over here somewhere. Um, yeah, the API queries are very sim simple. So when I was doing get beers owed, I was basically querying you know, for a certain template and then I was just hitting this endpoint. There's just only a few endpoints that you actually need to hit when interacting with the demo ledger. They're uh, search and exercise and a couple other small ones, but they're all basic very small queries that that power these things and yeah so that's uh, how to use the demo command line and how to s then take that and spin it up into a full working application and yeah so thank you very much for watching and look forward to doing the next episode